everyone welcome to my channel pure biology and uh, today i come with another video that is the gq that is one kind of g protein and the phospholipid is c beta okay this is a very brief uh, topic related to cell biology and uh, mainly cell signal okay so today's topic is about the g protein and the phospholipid c beta so before going to this topic i just uh, request to the newcomers who have uh, already uh, seen that means uh, i <coughs> request them to share this channel to your friends if this is helpful to you and obviously uh, subscribe this channel to give me support your support to me for giving you best okay so continue <coughs> with me that is the topic g protein gq and the phospholipid c beta so here many g protein coupled receptors exert their effects via g proteins like example is gq okay so g protein coupled receptor that is the gpcr g protein coupled receptor that is gpcr this exert their effects via g protein without g proteins gpcr cannot activate it okay cannot be activated so gq is the important one of the g protein and that activates the plasma membrane bound enzyme phospholipase c beta that is plc beta that means when g protein that is bound that is to be bound with the gpcr then gpcr with the g protein that becomes activated and in that situation they activate the enzyme phospholipase c beta okay so gpcr and g protein both gp g protein is gq they when they attach to each other they activate phospholipase c beta that present in the plasma membrane okay there are four kinds of plc beta are there in the all mammals okay so what is the plcs beta plcs gamma plcs delta and plcs epsilon okay four types of plcs are there and all these plcs require calcium ion for enzymatic activity okay so if the calcium is absent in cytosol that means the plcs these enzymes are not activated okay so calcium ion must be there for the activation of the plcs the activated plc that cleaves the phosphate dienoacetyl 4,5 bisphosphate okay and uh, one thing is that uh, i just have mistaken mammals expresses four classes of phosphoenocetide phosphoenocetide okay that's why then you can say that plcs beta and gamma etc okay <coughs> the activated plc cleaves the phosphate dienoacetyl 4,5 bisphosphate or you can say pip2 it breaks it pip2 into two secondary messengers one is ip3 another is dag ip3 is what this is inositol 145 triphosphate and dag means diacyl glycerol so what i'm saying that pip2 that is phosphate dial inositol 45 bisphosphate that cleaves to produce inositol 145 triphosphate that is ip3 and diacyl glycerol that is dag now phospholipid pip2 is a minor component of the plasma membrane and this localized that means this present in the inner leaflet of the phospholipid bilayer so where they present phospholipid bilayer one secondary messenger this is dag diacyl glycerol that remains associated with the plasma membrane okay so diacyl 
glycerol that remain associated with the plasmoid. And the other secondary messenger that is IP3 is a small polar molecule and that is released into cytosol. Clear? So that that remains where in the plasma membrane but IP3 that released into the cytosol. Okay? And it acts to signal the release of calcium ion from the endoplasmic reticulum. So what is the main function of this IP3? This creates a signal if calcium ion released or not. Because here we already know, we have already known that here in the <coughs> complex formation and the activation of the phospholipid C beta, calcium has an important role. So that's why IP3's function is or role of IP3 is that it creates a signal or it produces a signal when calcium ion is present in the cytosol and that is released from the endoplasmic reticulum. Clear? And IP3 here acts to release calcium ion from ER by binding to receptors that are ligand gated calcium ion channels. So what is saying that? That IP3 acts to release calcium ion. That means it helps in releasing of calcium ion from ER. Okay. And where they have to bind for the releasing of the calcium ion, they have to bind to the receptors that is known as the ligand gated calcium ion channels. Clear? If IP3 just binds to the receptor uh, ligand gated calcium ion channel, then calcium released from the ER. Okay, or releasing from the ER. And as a result, cytosolic calcium ion levels increase. So it's natural thing that when calcium ion is present in the cytosol, that means the uh, level of calcium ion or the concentration of the calcium ion that increases within the cytosol. And that affects the activities of a variety of the target proteins, including phosphatases and kinases. And its role is what? This increase that activities of kinases and phosphatases. That is the enzymes activities that is increased by the presence of calcium ion. Clear? Next is that diacylglycerol together with phosphatidylserine and calcium ion. They activate the enzyme PKC. What is PKC? That is protein kinase C. So what are very important? Diacylglycerol and phosphatidylserine and calcium ion. All need, all are needed for the activation of the protein kinase C or the PKC. And that is coming from cytosol. Okay? And generally the, and it just coming from the cytosol and it move towards uh, cytosolic phase of plasmodium. Okay? It moves toward the cytosolic phase of plasmodium. When activated PKC that phosphorylates. So after activation PKC phosphorylates and due to phosphorylation it produces specific serine or threonine residues on the target proteins. So this is the actual role of GQ and phospholipase C beta and obviously the calcium ion. Okay. So, <coughs> so this topic is now ended here and I will try to another topic related to cell signaling uh, in my next video. Okay. So you just continue with my channel and please you just after subscription hit the bell icon for getting all the notifications of my uploading videos okay so please uh, you just support me to continue this channel and i try to i just open this channel just for uh, helping to you so you just support me to give you best thank you